Welcome back friends. In past few videos we learned about Vim 9.0, its key bindings, Tmux etc. In this tutorial we will learn how to use few settings to set up Vim, make it look pretty and install plugins to enhance editor functionalities and we will also learn about Vim macros. Now as discussed Vim loads its configuration from .vimrc file. So first I am going to take a backup of existing file and start out fresh. So let me head out to my command prompt window and look for that vimrc file. All right, so I already have a backup. I'm going to remove that. So remove dot vmrc underscore backup. And then I'm going to rename the existing dot vmrc file as backup, as a new backup. So mv dot vmrc and change it to dot vmrc underscore backup. All right, so I, know I do not have a new any uh, vmrc file now. All right, so let's head out to uh, my root directory here. And now I want to create a new file. So either you can just directly put the vim or let me create a new file, say touch.vmrc uh, and I'm going to open this file using vim. So now as you can see, this is a blank file. There is nothing out there and this editor looks very ugly now. All right, so let me just uh, split the window. And the reason I'm doing it, I'm going to open the my backup file in the second uh, window here in the second buffer so that I can whenever I'm typing I can compare those things side by side. So first setting we are going to change is put the number. So let me just get rid of this one and let's open uh, .vmrc file here. Okay so first thing as you can see I set the number. What it does it displays the line number on the left hand side of your Vim window. Same thing if you can set up the relative number. So what relative number is, it, it shows the current line number and the relative path in context to the current line number. So for example, if you have multiple lines, 10 lines, so you want to see if you are at the fifth line and how many lines up or down you have to go, right? So let me just uh, first set the set rel relative number here, all right? And then let me add a couple of lines here so that you can see what relative number does, all right? See, so for example, you are at line number one, that's the current line number, and if you want to go down, you need to go one more line down. So let me add few more lines here, then it will make more sense. So here you see, for example, you are at the current line number three, but to go and change the number, you have to go two lines up. And it's very meaningful whenever you're using the counts to move up or down in your Vim editor, it comes very handy. Now let me, you know, add a couple of other settings, syntax on and uh, non no compatible. Again, if you want to learn more about these settings, just go to the Vim help and you will be able to find those out. I'm not going to cover everything, but you know, these are like very obvious things. So, for example, if you want to set up the wrap, if you want to set up the, your tab width or shift width, or scrolling off and on. So again, you know, there are a lot of settings we need to cover. So what I'm going to do, if you in the description of this video, you'll find a link to my test.vmrc file. Uh, please go through that file and you can copy paste it from there. You don't need to go through in each and every line here. These are the standard settings. So, but please, if you have any doubt about this, you can always go to Vim help. Just type colon H and put tab. Suppose you want to learn about uh, number or maybe shift with or tabs. Just type colon H tab and it will take you to Vim tutorial and it will tell you exactly what those standard settings or everything you need to know about that particular setting. All right, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy paste the entire settings from my file here, from my existing .vmrc file. So let me just try opening it side by side, that way it's easier. So let me copy the content from the dot uh, .vmrc underscore backup file. So I'm going to, you know, get rid of everything what I just typed and let's go back to uh, dot backup file underscore backup file here and then I'm going to go to the visual mode and select everything so shift V and hit the J keys select all the way all the settings now yank it go to the next buffer all right and here I all I need to do is just paste it so P all right now if I save it um, obviously a lot of things will change um, but now the the basic settings are like you know that's the way the you you set up your basic settings basic setting configurations right. now is the time to install plugins now you can think of plugins as a set of scripts or functions which extend or enhance vim editor functionalities you can always extend these functionalities by using one script at a time 
but it's always better to use some kind of plugin manager so that you can install multiple plugins from one place. Now to do that, you, what you need to do, you first you need to install that, uh, you need to install that plugin utility. So take a look at this curl command and uh, run this curl command on your terminal window. Make sure you are at the root of your directory and just copy paste this command. It's going to take a fraction of seconds and it will download your Vim plugin, plugin manager files. So now my Vim plugin is installed. Let's go to open your Vim.rc file. And here I'm going to include a couple of new plugins here. So at the end of this file, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call plugin. And that's how you include plugin in your VM, VimRC file here. So the syntax to do that is call plug begin and then call plug end. And between these two lines, uh, you can, you know, whatever plugin you want to install, just include those two, those um, plugins between these two lines. So in this case, I'm going to start off with the first plugin, say Wimp Solarized. And if you want to know more about this plugin, I will open the documentation in a minute. Basically what it does, it, it you know, it creates a solarized color scheme on your quad editor. And you will see that in a minute what it does. So Vim, Solarized, uh, let me just include that. So just remember, including is not going to do anything. We have to also install that. So either you can copy paste this, so light pillar, Vim, Solarized. And if you want to know more about that, just go to, just Google it and it will tell you everything you need to know about that particular plugin. And that's how you include the different functionalities in your code editor. Okay, anytime you have doubts, just go through the documentation because every plugin is different, right? So now the color scheme, as you can see, I already included something called color scheme equals to Solarize 8. And now let me save it. And now the way to do that, you have to run the command say colon plugin install. So let me just, uh, okay, I did a typo here. Vim Solarize 8, that's why it was giving me an error. So now let me go and plug in install here. And as you can see, immediately it changes the color scheme of my uh, code editor. Uh, all you need to do after including the plugin, plugin, just say plugin install and it will install that particular plugin. Now there are hundreds and like, you know, uh, not thousands particularly, but there are so many different options. The color schemes are out there. I just shown you one example and you can similarly, you can use different color schemes or different plugins. So let me now include one more plugin called Nerdtree. And this is, you know, so recall we, we talked about dot using the function called dot ex. Dot ex opens an explorer. So nerd tree is another function. It opens your directory in a tree-like structure. So, and it's, um, it makes your life definitely a lot easier if you work with this tree. So for example, let me just first include this tree and I'm going to install it using uh, colon plugin install command. And then you can map those. So for example, you want to call the nerd tree. So, the, so to open the nerd tree is like, you have to type colon nerd tree, which is like little bit laborious. So what you can do, so first you have to install it. Okay, now it's installed. So now all you need to do, I'm going to map that key. But before I do that, let me include a couple of other default uh, plugins here. And these are very simpler. So it's a, for example, another plugin is called Vim Prettier. And we are going to talk about that in a minute. But let me first just install it about uh, prettier and light line, these things. And we, we are going to, you know, I'm going to walk you through each of these default plugins, what it does. Okay. So as you can see, there is some problem here. Not tree and it's giving me this error. Let me just debug that first. So every time, you know, just keep in mind a lot of uh, times what happens if you have too many plugins, you, you might have some conflict. So please, you know, make sure that you run the plug update or plug in, plug in install, those kind of commands, right? So now let's go, you know, talk about this. So we learned about the Solarize 8. It changes the color scheme of your web editor. So similarly, the nerd tree, what it does, it opens um, opens your uh, a tree-like directory structure, okay? So now what we want to do, we want to, you know, use it. So if you type the command, say colon nerd tree toggle, let me just type this colon nerd tree toggle, and you will see what it does. See, it opens a, um, a directory, a folder, like an explorer kind of a window on left and right, okay? Similarly to what we used to do in .ex, but it's a lot more prettier. Okay, that's the only advantage, you know, um, of using nerd tree. And you can also customize it. Customizing in the sense, so for example, every time it's a hassle to type colon nerd tree. So instead what you can do, 
Um, so before we you know map that key, I want to show you that like you know inside the nut tree you can use your regular Vim key bindings to go up or down or left or right. Okay. So now let's go map this uh, nut tree toggle. All right. So I'm going to go to the end of this my dot uh, vmrc file here. Now actually I don't want to change my default. So let me copy it from my old vmrc dot backup file here. Uh, I had it mapped somewhere. Here you go. So map silent control D. Okay. So sometimes a lot of people prefer control D or control T. I think I, I would want like, you know, I have set it up as control D, but I think I'm going to change it to control T. Whatever, you know, what makes it more suitable. So for example, control D is always used as a control down. Uh, but so I think better key is control T. T means toggle. So I'm going to use control T and I, you know, whenever I press the control T, what is going to do is going to o open the nut tree. So that's how you map uh, your key bindings to do certain functions um, inside your Vim scripts. Okay, let me save this, show you a demo. So let me open it again. Now, if I hit control T is going to open that Explorer window on my left hand side. All right. So while we are here, let me fix uh, the next one. So there is another plugin we used, Light Line. Okay, we'll come back to Prettier later. So Light Line is the, you know, at the bottom of this, uh, you see the status line. So if I, you know, let me just change the setting to say Rainbow Active. So what it's going to do is going to, you know, put the rainbow colors or more colorful light line. You can always like change the settings to something else, but this is like, you know, uh, so see that so it, it changes the you know changes the color and maybe the display and it lose more options on your uh, status bar so we will come back to vim prettier in a minute let me just uh, include couple of more uh, great plugins which i used again there is a whole like you know different lines of plugins it totally depends on your taste so for example i'm going to include two more new plugins here dot uh, goyo and uh, fuzzy finder these are like you know must have plugins so let me first uh, sh show you what goyo does and uh, again there are more like you know status bar uh, plugins it depends on your choice please google it and you'll find thousands of that so what goyo does you know if you are if you are a writer and if you like distraction free writing so just type the command say colon goyo and it will open your um, editor in such a way that you know you 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 know it focuses it put the focus on the text file itself okay you will have more room and it's more readable okay sometimes i like it so you know i like to have this plugin all right now let's start working on vim macros now macros are the special functions special functions built in into the, your vim editor what it does it allows you to automate certain tasks so for example if you are working with python so every python file you know most of the python you know for, let's take this example most of the time you start working on the python file and you end up uh, typing all of this command so for example import uh, numpy as np import pandas as pd so there are certain default packages you want to include so every time you know you don't want to type the whole thing so what do you want to do uh, you can create a macro to do this for you so for example, I'm going to open a new blank Vim file. It could be any Vim file because I'm going to record the macro. And to do that, you have to, you have to like, you know, be into the command mode and hit Q. So what this does, the moment you hit the Q, it will start recording and then you have to give it a name. So for example, let me go back and say hit Q and then it will ask for a key. So for example, P. So recording at P. So it's recording a macro called P and here, whatever you want to do so for example i want to type all these commands here import pandas as pd and import numpy as np and then i want to get out of this and hit q again so what q will do it will stop recording okay so let me go back and uh, uh, escape this so i'm in the command prompt okay now we have a macro called p and we have recorded it okay so now let's go quit that and open any other different file any any file anywhere it doesn't matter so i'm just going to open a blank file here and if you say type the at p if you you have to be in the command mode here uh to no sorry sorry for the typo go back at p so at p and it will just display whatever you have recorded 
so you know this is just very simple example you can do multiple things using it's a it could be a very very important and you know powerful functions in your inside your uh, macro so you can have as many macros as you want and you can record those so that you can automate those functionalities and it can do a lot more than simple copy paste these things now at any point of time you want to know how many uh, such macros exist and you can always override them so to command to do that is like call in registers and uh, if you just like you know it will display all the recorded macros you have in your file in your vm setting if you want to know about a particular macro in my case p you just say call in registers p she and this is the you know it will display the uh, macro what you have just recorded again it's a very powerful functionality so if you use this like you know uh, it can definitely be a great addition to your vim editor